written and it reads, um, H, J, K, L, and M are points on the circumference of the circle with center O. M, K is a diameter of the circle and it is parallel to H, K. The parallelism is very important to note. M, J equal to J, L and the angle J, M, K is 38. So they are giving us some information. here. What we want to do though is to make sure that we are paying attention to details as we go forward. So let us look on this question. It says, explain. Um, giving a reason why angle HJM is 30. So you're telling me already that angle HJM, HJM is this angle. I'm going to mark it here. This angle here, all right? I was told that this is 38 by the question. So they are saying, just give, because remember though, that they just told us that this line here, look at it, the R is on it for parallelism, this line, Oh, sorry about that. That line there is parallel to that line there. And then this is a transversal coming on right here. I'm seeing that Z angle coming out. So everybody should see that Z angle looking at that. So yes, it is it because the Z angles are equal. So this angle here, yes, this angle right here where the 38 is, is equal to that angle there, the Z angle. So, all right. So let us just, just write up that quickly. All right. So it is 38 because alternate angles are equal. Alternate angles, that's the official term. So explain, give a reason why that. I could say alternate angles are equal. So that is a good enough reason to call it that one mark. MJK is 90, MJK, look at it, M to J to K. So we're, we're dealing with M to J to K right here. Remember though that M, M, O, K, M, O, K is actually a straight line, which means that we have an angle in a semicircle going on. So the angle in the semicircle going on, I am able to say, oh, this part is 90 degrees based on that fact. So for that one, that angle there that they want, at J, M, J, K, it's 90 degrees because of this. Angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees, providing that they, 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 it's subtended from the endpoints of the diameter, right? Providing that, that angle subtend from the end point of the diameter, which is at M and K, and then it went to the circumference at J. Now, those are the provisions that we are referring to, right? So we have that. All right, let's go deeper. It says, determine the value of each of the following angles. Show detail working where necessary. So we were not asked for reasons, just detail working where necessary. So M... MLJ, 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 M. MLJ is already highlighted for us. We need this angle right here. We need that angle right there, right? MLJ. So take a good look at MLJ. Taking a good look at MLJ, yes. We're going to notice something here. Let's look at this. This angle is equal to this angle. So if I find this angle, I automatically would have found the angle that I want because they are in the same segment. But I could find that angle now because guess what? Following the triangle M, let me just highlight it again for you. Uh, let me use blue. Following this triangle that I'm going to touch, M, J, K. We have 90 degrees here and we have the 38 here. So I can find this here. So simply using 180 minus the sum of the 90 degree plus the 38 degrees, 180 minus 128, all right? Minus 128 and then we're gonna be left with 52, all right? So then, make sure, yeah, 
It is, but I like to double check. One, so it's 52, which means that, let me just clear up my diagram here, clear up all of these, clear back up those, yeah. I am suggesting that this is 52. Therefore, this is 52 as well. So then, that angle down here is 52 degrees. All right, and the working is up here. Angle LJK. LJK. Let's look. LJK. L, where is L? L, J, okay. Oh, it's marked. It's right here. We want that angle there. But you know that if I get if I get this angle here, I automatically get the angle I want because they are in the same segment again. If I get this angle, it is this angle, same segment. If I get them, I get that right there. So when you look at this, then you're thinking that, how can you get that angle right there? How can we get that angle there? LMK. LMK. L to M to K. Because remember, we have an isosceles triangle running. So I'm going to highlight the isosceles triangle. You have to be thinking this isosceles triangle will give us a big clue right now. Look at that isosceles triangle. We have ice to the triangle. This side is that side. So the base angles are equal. So with that isosceles triangle, I could tell you that all of this angle here is 52. All of that is 52, like this 52 here. Which means then I'm going to embark on that idea by saying, guess what? I need to say 52 minus 38. If 52 minus 38 is going to give me 14 which means this little piece here is 40 because everything here is 50. And that's the point we're making right there. Let's take off back some stuff, right? So then that is 40. Remember I just said, the moment I find this angle here, then I would have automatically found that this is 40 as well because they're in the same segment. So when I know that, I ended up knowing that one. So the answer for L, J, K, we, we did speak about it up there. That angle here is 40 degrees. And they didn't ask for a reason, all right? But the working out, as you could see, would have just been a 52 minus a 38, getting 14. And then we link the same segment idea. And that's what brought us there. The last one says angle J, H, M. J H M. Let's go for that. J H M. J H M. J H M. Let me clear up the diagram a little bit. J H M. J A. Where's it? Oh, J H M. Oh, we want that angle right. Remember though, opposite angle in a cyclic quadrilateral. So I need to identify the cyclic quad. For us, let me clear up everything that we don't need, so that we can see what we need. We don't need any of those. Here is a cyclic quad. I'm going to be putting my cyclic quad in blue. There it is. That, 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 that. So we're seeing the cyclic quadrilateral. Opposite angles are supplementary. So right now we are able to just manipulate that. 180 minus the 52 and we're done. So opposite angle in a cyclic quad will add to give 180 degrees. So I'll definitely say, that 180 minus the 52, and that is going to give us 128. Yes. And then that is the answer for that right there. And we're done with our circle. Wasn't such a bad one, right? Let's jump to number, we're still we're looking at the trigonometry, which is the B part. Let's go. Now we're looking at the B part of it, and it says from a port L, yes? From a port L, ship R is 250 kilometers on a bearing of 65 degrees. So I'm going to mark that for us right now. I like putting on my labels as I go. Here is my 65 degrees, right? Um, and then it says a ship T is 180 degrees and you are 180 kilometers and you're looking at that. 
180 kilometers and um, 180 kilometers from L. So we're seeing that. Oh yeah, we're seeing that. And then it says on a bearing of 148, which means, which means that this bearing, all of this bearing here, yeah, from the north, uh, let me, let, let me, from right here, should, right, from the north, coming around, all of that would be 148 degrees, all of that. All right, this information is illustrated there. So we're looking at that, all right? First question, it says, complete the diagram below above by inserting RLT. So it's just RLT, RLT. Let us look where it's RLT. RLT, if I should share it, it's just right here, right here. Nothing else outside of that. So it's that angle in the triangle there, which means that we have to find R, um, L, T by subtracting 65 from 148. So you could see that you will take your 148, take out the 65, and then you're left with this angle in the triangle here that they ask for. So now that we have done that, that's what they wanted to put on. We have that going there. We get one more. Now they're saying using that, we want to calculate RT, the distance between the two ships. So we want to calculate RT, which is we want to calculate this distance right now. No problem. In calculating this distance, all I'm going to do is to use my cosine rule. Cosine rule says RT square is equal to 250 square plus 180 squared minus two times 250, yes, times 180, the cosine of 83. Why am I using this? It's because I know everything in that corner. I know the 250, I know the 180, and I know the 83. So when you know everything in that corner and you're finding the side opposite to that corner, then we employ the cosine rule. Now let's carry out our calculations, all right? So in carrying out our calculation, 250 square is going to give us uh, 62,500, 250 square, yeah? And then 180 square, all right? 180 square is going to give us 32,400, yeah? And then, then 250 times, so talking minus 2 times 250 times 180, the cosine of 83, that will give us minus 10,968.24. So let's put everything together. RT square is going to equal to, when you add these and subtract, I'm getting 83,931.76. But I like to verify it. So I'm just going to double check it just to make sure that there is no error. Yeah, the principle is right, but making an error will spoil everything there. So 83,931.6, yes. And then I'm going to take the root of that. So the root of that will land me 289.71, right? 0.71. Um, definitely kilometers. They didn't ask us to round off anything. So this is basically approximately 290 um, km, all right? This is basically that R289.8. So it depends. Any one of those would be a good response right now. Very good.